it may hello Awesome. Hi, Keith. Hi, Jalen. Glad y'all are here. Good morning. How's everyone? I said uh, good afternoon. How's <laughs> everyone doing today? Doing well. Nice to see you. Glad you hopped on. Yeah, thanks for having this. You bet. We'll wait just another minute or so. Let anybody else hop on that's joining before we get rolling. Blaine, Kelsey, glad y'all are here. We're going to give it just another minute for anybody else that's hopping on, and then we'll get started. Sounds great. Awesome. Kristen, you're ready to roll. Yeah. Okay. I think okay. so. Sounds good. Others can pop in as they come, but we're so glad y'all are here and are excited to, to share a little bit more about Xturn and um, uh, make sure you are set to participate um, for this coming fall cohort. So we're, we are um, delighted that you signed up. Start with intros. My name is Marilyn Flowers. I'm the Senior Vice President of Engagement for TechPoint. Um, I've actually been at TechPoint now for a little over seven years. Time flies when you're having fun. Um, and Extern has certainly been a big part of the work that I've been engaged with here um, at TechPoint. So very excited to tell you all more about this. Kristen, can I kick it to you to do a quick intro? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Kristen Elfering and I am the Director of Program Operations. So I oversee all of the programs we run, um, specifically around talent. And one of our largest, as we all know, is Extern. So hopping in here and we'll chat with you all later. We'll let Marilyn take it from here. Perfect. Um, I know many of you may be eating a late lunch and uh, it is totally fine that you're off camera. I do want to make sure we tailor this to meet the needs of who's in the group. So if you don't mind either on video or chat, um, just to get a little bit of context, how many of you are here for the first time? You don't know anything about Xturn. You you got some random ping or someone told you to come and you're here versus how many of you are here and you are with a company who regularly engages and you're either looking for more information or you're a new team member to it and you're getting the lay of the land before your team participates. If you wouldn't mind, just give me a little context, verbally chat, whatever, that would be great. So I make sure that we we are focusing this for the right audience. So this is Blaine. I'm, I'm from uh, Alcatraz. Um, we do uh, uh, biometrics for, for physical security. Um, last year, we participated in, in the program in the interview process. However, um, we weren't able to extend an offer to a, an extern. Um, we are interested in um, doing that same process again this year. So just wanted to make sure there was anything new we needed to do or make sure we understood the dates and the process and so forth. We were kind of late to the game. Uh, last year. And so I just wanted to try to get ahead of it this year. That's awesome, Blaine. And well, I'm really glad you're here and I'm glad that we'll get you all such situated up front. That's fantastic. And from my perspective, um, so we have a startup uh, SaaS company, industrial automation SaaS company, and we've just kind of recently over the last year been engaged with the 16 Tech and the TechPoint community and kind of CICP in general. So this will be in kind of an intro to us. Uh, we're, we're not that familiar with the extern program, but we are familiar with TechPoint and we try to participate in all the various TechPoint events as much as possible. Awesome. I love it. Okay, that's great context, Keith. Jalen, completely new. Fantastic. I'm looking at some other names I do know. So I'm, I think there's probably a mix of some people that might know a little bit, but 
That is great. Then we will start square one and make sure everybody is kind of on the same page. And then we'll leave plenty of time for questions and can talk through kind of individual instances for your organization. So, um, oh, that's great, Kelsey. Okay, so glad you're here. Talk about your situation too. Okay, so here we go. Um, I want to start with some context to, to Keith's point. We're part of a larger network. So I want to give you a sense of who TechPoint is, why we do this, um, and uh, how this all fits in. So TechPoint is essentially a growth accelerator for Indiana's digital innovation economy. We are focused on making sure that we are one of the top tech hubs in the country. Um, and we are this kind of unique intersection of a public-private partnership um, that supports industry, is led by industry, but is able to bring other resources to bear to support what industry needs. Um, talent has been consistently the number one issue that we hear regularly from all of our partner companies. Um, and back in the day, Extern was the first talent program we created to address that. And I'll say more about that in a minute. But the other thing I want to address on this slide is that we're a part of a larger network. The Central Indiana Corporate Partnership is the larger nonprofit that we sit underneath. They are, and our entire shared mission is to focus on Indiana's economy um, and make sure we have strategic plans and development processes in place um, for the future of Indiana. And um, we are one initiative within that, but there are other initiatives that focus on a variety of sectors. Um, so they're great collaborators. And, and I my main point here is that uh, we are part of a very strategic network of companies, of philanthropic institutions, of academic partners um, that make up our community and a part of what makes actually extern so successful. One more bigger picture, and Krista, if you'll head to the next slide, just from a tech point strategy angle, there's basically three things that we do. Expand pipelines, hence extern fits right into this priority number one. Everything in the talent space, we're really thoughtful about ensuring that we have the long-term strategy needed to grow our workforce here in Indiana. Secondly, enhance connectivity. A lot of what we're known for at TechPoint is really fostering the network and the community around the tech industry. Um, here, it is truly one of, I think, the secret sauces of Indiana's um, tech ecosystem and what, something that we want to continue to develop even as we grow. And then elevate industry. A lot of storytelling, media, PR efforts to make sure that both um, locally, regionally, nationally, we are known as a, a player and a leader um, in digital innovation. Um, lots of data and research that comes along with that too. So um, lots in those buckets. We're not here to tell you everything about TechPoint, but that's who we are. It's why we do this work. Um, and, and one of the reasons why we got started in the X trend lane very early on. So Kristen, if you go ahead and hit to the next slide, this slide I love because it shows some kind of overall stats of Extern um, over the years. Uh, we actually just wrapped up our 10th summer of Extern. So this now feels um, what once was kind of a startup pilot program is now an institution um, in the community here. And we're really proud of that. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I, Extern came out of conversations with companies who said, talent is our number one concern. We know we need to have um, more strategies to do so. And a real sense and appreciation for the fact that Indiana has some outstanding universities that are producing an incredible amount of talent and talent that we need, but frankly, haven't done a great job of retaining. And we're losing too many of them who, who head out of state when they graduate. And that's often because we're competing against known brands and entities um, as a community that we just um, struggle for an individual community a member, a startup company, a B2B company to go really develop a strong presence at a career fair. So back in the day, think like 2013, there were conversations happening around that um, that then led to the creation of Extern and this idea that as a community, we could come together and do what more than what one company could do alone and really give ourselves a brand and identity that would stand on college campuses here in Indiana and actually nationally even um, so that we would be a recognized hub for um, top college talent um, as they think about full-time opportunities post-graduation. So extern in a nutshell, paid summer internship program for students that not only um, takes care of the opportunity to work with an employer, but also takes care of programming and housing and this amazing experience that wraps around the whole internship so that by the end of the summer, they love their company, they love the state of Indiana, Indianapolis in particular, the site we're focusing on today, but um, really have a kind of rich view of what's possible here for their career and are committed to staying here in the long run. And that's really at the end of the day, what we're all about. Um, if you'll head to the next slide, Kristen, I 
before we get into kind of the details of what extern is, I do want to just offer some thoughts about why employers participate in extern because that there are a variety of answers to that question. Um, and as you're kind of sitting in the shoes evaluating this, you may fit into a number of these different buckets. Um, one, and as we're going to talk about here in a minute, this is a, a very large scale recruitment effort um, and a collective brand that is a really attractive and meaningful to students um, to be a part of. And employers often love leaning into that and not having to develop that university brand um, on their own, maybe because they're not at scale or maybe they are at scale, but they're not as known for tech. And so this is a really valuable play for them. Um, secondly, and you'll hear about this as we talk through the admissions process, but we are really committed to diversifying um, the pipeline of talent that's coming into Indiana companies. We think that the coming the students that are coming out of colleges are a really important place where we can help do that. Um, and so you'll see we're committed to that. We love partnering with companies who are um, eager to do that as well and want to continue to diversify their pipelines. Um, third, we um, often hear from companies that they want to be part of the bigger community, and extern is one really valuable way to do that. I, this is, um, because the program has been around for so long, this has really become a really awesome employer network as well, and a kind of support system for employers as they host interns um, and their organizations, especially if that's a newer activity to them. And then lastly, this is totally a retention play um, because it's not just a one-off internship program that employers are doing and that there's a lot of wraparounds that Kristen's going to walk us through. Um, we become really effective at retaining the talent um, and then also not only support them in the summer that they're here. Oops, oh, sorry. Not only support them for the summer that they're with us, but support them in the long run um, when they graduate or looking for jobs. Once they're here, they're getting their footing in the community. That's kind of all things that we are thinking about in their experience. So um, with that, I want to zoom in on the admissions process and give you a sense of what that looks like. So um, what I, I laugh when I think about this scale, because when Extern was first created, they had no idea, the team that was originally founding it, that they were creating something that would become so large and frankly, so darn competitive. So at this point in the program's history, we know that we'll receive um, about 2,000 applications annually for Extern. I anticipate, and I'm like nervous, knock on wood to say this out loud, but um, the team is seeing record numbers of applications coming in this year. We, are, we still have a number of weeks to go. We're already over a thousand applications. So students are hungry for this opportunity. It is really resonating on campus this year. Um, and as you can see, the reach is really broad. So um, applications come from 44 home states, although Kristen just told me we got Idaho, so 45, um, and over 200 universities that they're coming in from. If you go to the next slide, Kristen, um, just a sense of who is in this pipeline. So um, I wanna highlight here that we, our bread and butter has long been technical skilled applicants. Um, we got started, especially in the software development space. We have bukus of, that, of those kinds of applicants um, and we love placing those students. However, we've also heard increased demand over the years from tech companies that, hey, we need those business skilled students too. And so we really attract across the board when it comes to roles. And if you head to the next slide, Here's a full listing of all of the roles that we supply for regularly. Um, artificial intelligence is highlighted there in purple because that's a new one we've added this year, knowing it's such a hot area for employers. And I, Kristen was telling me earlier today that students are applying also in record numbers for that area. So lots of interest on both sides of the house for, um, for that role. But you can see wide variety of roles here. I will also say um, depending on what your individual company needs, we are always open to talking to employers and saying, hearing what their unique needs are, what unique intersection points their work meets, and we'll continue because we have so many relationships with universities to find the top programs that fill those roles um, so that when you're coming and being a part of the whole admissions process that you're finding the talent that you need to find. Moving right along, I mentioned diversity earlier. Here you can see some of the stats of the applicants that we come in. We're really proud that this is meaningful improvement for the overall industry and the, the numbers that we know are true in the overall workforce. We still feel really responsible for increasing these numbers um, year over year and continue to uh, add to our strategies um, of ways that we do this. This is also one of the reasons we recruit nationally, so we're able to tap into all sorts of different universities who have different pipelines of talent. We're really active in different um, conferences and such that are targeting specific populations. So excited to continue the work here, but wanted to make sure you got to see some of that as well. 
as we look to the next slide, this is one of my favorite graphics, just because it gives such a fun sense. This is something we use on Canvas with students, but here's what the overall admissions process looks like. So I mentioned 2,000 applications will come in on the front end. Um, then our team will spend the time looking at the qualifications of those 2,000 students, looking at resumes, looking at who has prior internship experience, who has um, other like work experience, competitive project work, all that sorts of stuff, um, the paper stuff. And we'll screen down to about, oh, 1,600, 1,500 or so that we'll say, hey, come on, we wanna see what you can do because ultimately the extra admissions process is built on the idea that we wanna give students a shot to actually do the work. So we have, um, in the case of software development, uh, a startup called Woven, um, who partners with us to provide a really outstanding software development screen. Um, but for other roles and every role that students can apply for, um, an industry created project and prompt um, that students work on and contribute. It's something that takes them a couple of hours to do. So it's also a chance to make sure a student's really serious about this opportunity. Um, but they complete all of those projects. And then we bring a panel of industry and university and um, professionals who come in and grade all of those. Um, so we're talking like almost a thousand submissions total that come in every year, they get graded. And the very top cut of those are what we then put in front of employers. So come um, mid-October, um, employers will get the opportunity to look at the top 250 or so students, um, filter by role and all sorts of different specific information for students, um, and then pick out of those the students that they're most excited about and that would be the best fit. Hey, Kristen, I want to make sure real quick, can you hear that background noise on my end? No? Okay, just making sure. Um, great. So given that, um, at that point in the process, employers screen down, they tell us who they're excited to interview. And then those are the students that we bring forward to finalist day. And finalist day is truly one of my most favorite days of the whole year. And if you'll go to the next picture, Kristen, this will give you a sense of why. For those of you that are have been a part of the process um, and have been around this, uh, hopefully you'll attest to the fact that this is a really fun, special day. But um, finalist day is where we bring all of our employers who are participating. So think 100 plus hiring departments that come with the very top students. So 200 or so students that come um, day of and you speed date interview all day long um, until you actually have the chance to meet about eight candidates or so, seven or eight students. Um, and at the end of the day, you rank your preferences and students, students rank their preferences of the employers that they talk to. They each talk to about three or four um, employers. And then we run that through a big matching algorithm. And um, by early the next week, poof, you know who your interns are for the next summer and you're able to confirm, give them offers, um, get them all set up for the summer. So we have found it is both really fun and it is a really efficient way to match talent at a really large scale. Um, and again, this is part of, I think, what makes it such a special program too. The employer side of this and the community that's a part of this day, I think is one of the magic points. Um, and what also gets students so excited about the opportunity. So that is big picture admissions, how we match, um, what that all looks like. I'm going to kick it over to Kristen now, who's going to walk you through the other side of the house, what happens when students actually arrive and are with us in the summer. Awesome. All right. So one, we'll start um, May 26th, Memorial Day is uh, move-in weekend. So all of our students um, in the Indianapolis area um, will move into housing. Um, so that's one of the awesome benefits of this program is that our students actually have housing. They don't have to worry about that. It's centrally located. They also get to experience Indianapolis, which maybe they haven't done that before. Um, so they're right in the downtown area, which they really enjoy. Um, so May 26th, they move in. We will have them start with you all on that Tuesday, May 28th. Um, and then we provide three weekends of programming over the summer. So an all day Friday, and then most of the day on Saturday, and we engage them in three different buckets of programming that we call them. So we have social, we have professional development, and we have civic engagement. So I'll go into a little bit more of those details now. So the social experience, of course, we want them to have fun. It's summer. We want them to enjoy their experience. We want them to connect with their peers as well and experience what this city of Indianapolis has to offer, which is a lot. 
Um, so we will take them to Indy 11 games. We'll take them to the zoo. And that's all something that we cover and we'll sponsor for them throughout the summer. So they don't have to worry about that. We will provide them transportation from one place to the other so they can just easily hop on. There's some very cool school buses that come and pick them up, <laughs> which they always love as a throwback back to when they were younger. Um, but creating that fun and engaging environment is always really important. And really it's part of the housing experience as well because they do get to live together. They create that network and that community Community right off the bat. And by the end of the summer, there's best friends um, that they've roomed with and that they've experienced throughout the summer. So it's pretty cool to see that progression over such a short time too. Civic engagement. So we want them to understand and know the community that they live in and working in while they're here. We want them to connect with that community and understand what it means to give back as well as working and living and playing. So we will have them go to food pantries, we'll do neighborhood cleanups, different gardening um, areas. And one of our favorites that um, we started this year actually was classroom setups. So there's so many teachers at the end of the year that need help setting up their classroom. And they really love the experience of being able to go to these schools, see the schools that are in the area and the different neighborhoods. Um, and then setting up those classrooms and helping out those teachers who we all know need so much help sometimes um, towards the end of the year, towards the end of the summer before the year starts. And then we have professional development. We want them to, of course, have fun. We want them to, of course, give back to the community, but then we want them to gain skills, right? What are the additional skills they can bring and learn to your company over the summer? Throughout the summer, they're learning new skills. We have sessions around leadership. We have sessions around specific product management or sales force. Um, that they're able to jump into and they have options of which ones are interesting them. So it gives that variety as well and really opening up to everyone because we're probably having around 200 of them so that they get to experience extra in the way they need it and how they need to grow. Um, so it's a really cool experience that they're able to do that here in Indianapolis. Now, of course, we've talked about how this program has we just finished our 10th summer. So now we're going into our 11th year. So we have some data. <laughs> we all have data. So wanted to show you within this time frame the data that we have and the improvements and the increases we've seen that we're really excited about and know why this is a really successful program for the employers and for the students. So before our externs, we survey them, before they go through the program, they had a positive impression of Indiana of about 45%. And about 41% didn't really have an impression at all. By the end of it, 92% have a positive impression of Indiana, which is really incredible to see that jump. And we know that this program is exposing them to experiences that they actually love and are excited about. Likeliness to accept a job in Indiana after graduation, which we all know is the goal here. And that's really what we're striving towards. So before 37% were interested in accepting a job, the after we're in the upper 66%, which in a short 10 week time frame, to have that large jump is something that we're really, really proud of and are always working to strive um, to hire in the future as well. So one of the things that they also get to do, so the extern program will finish and then they get put into our TechPoint alumni network. So we have a number of programs that we run. I'm sure you may have heard of other ones along the way, but anyone who has completed any of our TechPoint programs gets placed into this alumni network. And that's a huge benefit for students, but and for you as employers, because this way our students are now adults, right? They've taken a job, they're full-time here in Indiana and they are able to experience and connect in the same way and ground them here in the state of Indiana because they're having that network and that connection here, which is so important, as we all know, to feel part of a community where you live, to feel like you're giving back to the community and to feel like you have friends and a great job here. So that's a great benefit. We also, at the end of the um, extern program, if they're a senior, um, so the third the group, if they are going into their senior year, we actually help them to find a full-time job here in Indiana. Hopefully it is with their employer because that's what we are all about, focusing on getting you all, your employer, as employers, hiring those um, interns. But 
full time. Sometimes it doesn't work out. Um, and so we want to make sure that they have that opportunity to work with another organization that is here in Indiana. And so we connect and try and find that. So that's kind of that. I figure I will pass over back to Marilyn to take on company expectations. Come on over. All right. So a couple of highlights here when it comes to like, okay, this sounds awesome, but like, what does that actually mean? I'm signing my team up for what are we going to have to do and what do we have to pay? So here's the headlines of that. Um, at the end of the day, the first thing that we need from employers is to provide really great internship experiences. Um, we know because we're bringing in kind of cream of the crop talent, there's nothing worse than those students being sent out to, to go grab coffee. So um, I will say what's cool is I think as an industry, we've really come a long way in this space and people are really well poised to do this. And employers come up with the most creative and engaging ways to bring bring these students into their teams. Um, and if internships are a new thing to your organization and you're like, okay, what does this actually mean? We are very happy to help you. We're happy to connect you with other employers in our network who can help provide some of that support as you think about this. So um, anyway, step one, meaningful project work. Uh, number two, the student wages are also the employer's responsibility. We have lots of data about what um, the hourly wage is that and the averages and the kinds of roles that are associated with different price points. But um, ultimately, it's up to you as the employer to set the hourly wage. Um, it's something you directly negotiate with the student. But we know most of them are paid, as you can see on this, $18 and up and can tell you more about that, too, if you're curious. Um, and then lastly, we are able to offer this program in large thanks to the Lilly Endowment, which has been a consistent philanthropic funder of this program since its inception, and they've continued to support it, which is just amazing. So the actual costs of this program are fairly significant when you think about the time and the staff and the people that we employ that make this happen. And then you think about the housing costs, the programming costs. Um, however, as part of the philanthropic funding, they also are want to make sure that industry is supportive of this and that employers are contributing as well. So we ask for every company contribute $4,000 per externs at per extern that they hire. The key thing I want to highlight here, though, is we do not invoice that. Nothing, no money is paid until student actually arrives and is working with you in the summer. So you could come and be a part of finalist day even, find a student or not find a student, you wouldn't be out anything. Or you could find a student and that student drops out suddenly because of some unknown reason in the spring or whatever, you're not going to get charged. So um, just want to offer that guarantee and the fact that that's another kind of benefit of being a part of this whole experience. Um, next slide, though, I do want to highlight we've been working on just some ways to make this more accessible, particularly for startup companies um, who are small getting off the ground. We know you can still be a really valuable part of this kind of workforce development work, as well as you need people who are going to contribute to your organization, um, but to do so in a financially sustainable way. So we are really proud. This is the second year that we've created a partnership with the Indian Economic Development Corporation, the IEDC, as we know them, um, and they are offering a grant funding to help support the cost of this. So they will pay for 50% of the wages um, that an employer owes a student and 50% of the extern fee that comes to us. Um, and if you click to the next slide, Kristen, just to give you a sense of who's eligible for this, company has to be headquartered in Indiana. Um, they have to be in business for no more than 10 years. They have to have 25 or fewer employees. Um, and then they're focused on some kind of innovative work. So basically, we're not looking for retail companies or that sort of thing. We're looking for folks who are really living into that technology space or the intersection of other industries and tech. Um, but anyways, I hope this is something that you can take advantage of. If this is relevant to you, we can definitely talk more um, about it. I anticipate with the funding, grant funding that we have from them, we have about 30 spots. So if you're eyeing this and thinking, ooh, that's going to make this possible for my company, I would encourage you to commit soon so that we know that we get your spot guaranteed and it's not filled up. Um, which is a great segue to what are next steps. So if you are ready to participate and you're like, okay, this all sounds awesome, sign me up. Here's what the process looks like. Um, so we're right now in that employer and student, as you've heard, recruitment phase for the next few weeks. Um, October 18th, so almost a month from now, um, is when company commitments are due. And we ask all companies to say, okay, here's how many spots I'm hiring. Here's the skills that I need. Um, you're all ready to roll on what you're looking for. We'll then bring you in for the finalist review process, that packet um, that I referenced and getting to look at the students that you want to interview. We'll set up your schedule. You'll come to finalist day on November 17th. Um, and then you, after that process, we'll walk you your team through the next steps of securing that student with an official offer um, that happens. 
I'll also just highlight, we do ongoing matching as well for employers. So um, let's say you come to finals day, you find a student, you're so wowed, you're like, give me more. We'll continue to help match more um, if that's the case, either through one-off introductions, or we also do a spring finalist day. So that will be available in early March as well. Um, and then students usually move in the weekend of Memorial Day. So that comes every year faster than you think it would. <laughs> um, so there's the overall overall timeline. For now, October 18th is the big date to remember. Okay, woof, we made it through a lot, a lot of explanation. I hope it was helpful just to hear the big overview. And now we are very happy to take any questions that you have about the program, about how to get, get involved, next steps, specifics for your company, feel free to pepper away if you have things. And feel free to use the chat. Feel free to come off of mute, whatever works best for you. So to, to qualify for the um, the startup program, we are, we're a startup. We just, we email you, like how, what's the process to apply for that? Is that? Great question. So you actually will just use the same commitment form that everybody else uses. It's going to ask you those basic qualifying questions. And as soon as um, we see on your end, you've submitted it, we see that you qualify, then we take it to the IEDC for approval. And then we follow up with you and say, good news, you're confirmed, you're set. Um, and that funding will be yours. And that will all happen here in the next few weeks. We're doing it on a rolling basis. So you would definitely know before finalist day that you're all set to go. Got it. Okay. Yeah, but that's great, Blaine. I'm really glad y'all qualify. That would be awesome for y'all to tap into. And yeah, oh, you put in, this is great. Kristen dropped in the chat the link for just all of the extern employer information. And if you go there, there's also a whole specific website um, that uh, talks more about the startup assistance program as well. Any other questions? Kristen, did I miss anything? You got anything else you want to make sure we say? <laughs> so, okay. Okay. Keep questions coming if you have them, but I will also just preview these um, these next steps that Kristen's pulled up on the slide. We will send a follow-up email out this afternoon to all of you so you've got the relevant links and information that you need as your team considers this. If you've got specific questions that you want to walk through with Kristen or myself, we are also very happy to get on a one-off call and talk more with you and how this fits with your team. So know that that is absolutely available. My email's up on the slide. Happy to talk more with you. Um, and I'll be the one that sends you the email afterwards. So you'll have it right there in your inbox too. Um, in that follow-up email, we'll send you the commitment form. It's pretty short and sweet, um, but it's going to focus on the quantity of externs that you need, the skill sets that, that you're looking for so that we can make sure we're delivering the pipeline that you need ultimately. Um, and October 18th is the big day to remember. Um, I did mention, and I'll, I'll say this again, I, the fall season is a really big placement time and it's because that's when our most competitive students come through the pipeline and we want to scoop them up now. We do have the spring final day option too. So if you're thinking, Ooh, this sounds interesting, but I don't know if I can be ready by October 18th. We do still have that option too. So, um, awesome. Well, last call, any other questions? Nope. Oh, thanks for the info. It's great. Awesome. That's great. Okay. I'm glad we've covered it. Well, if you feel good, feel free, head on out. We'll send you an email. If you want to hang on the line and ask any questions um, of, us, of us specifically, we're happy to do that too. But thanks to you all for making the time and for your interest in the program. We are really excited to work with your teams um, to help bring this to life and appreciate your interest in being a part of this community initiative. We, we can't do it without you. So thank you very much for being a part of this.